All right. Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. Away. All right. Okay. How's everybody doing? Who's excited to paint flamingos? <laughs> I'm super excited. I love, love, love my flamingos. They are so much fun. Let me grab a couple of things real fast and we will begin. Okay, so let's, um, okay, let me know if you can hear me. <laughs> Hi there, using acrylics, perfect, perfect. So uh, because I am streaming, uh, I'm broadcasting through StreamYard, I may not be able to see your name. So uh, either allow uh, stream yard show your name or maybe when you put your comment would you please like put your name in there <laughs> so i know can hear you just fine perfect awesome mess. i know all right this is gonna be fun 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 okay so we are painting um uh, flamingos today these are our two kind of inspiration references things, just to, you know. So this one is done with paint. This is acrylic paint. And this one is done with acrylic paint markers. What I will be doing today, I will have both. I will be working on two things simultaneously, which will allow you guys time to catch up because I know that I tend to go fast. And it also lets you see um, how things can be done with different uh, tools, right? So uh, for the painting, we're just going to use, we're going to use just a regular set of paints and we're going to mix our own colors. So of course we have black and white and we have aquamarine and a phthalo blue green shade. And I have Conecridon magenta and uh, cadmium red. And I have a, a, like mid yellow, like a warm yellow. That light doesn't work for me. Um, sorry, uh, mid yellow and the lemon yellow. So we will be mixing our own colors as we go. I think it's a great skill to have. Um, I would love to introduce you to my newest program. I am trying. <laughs> I applied to be uh, to have an affiliate link with Amazon. It is at no cost to you, but um, if you buy from my links, it sends me like a few, you know, a few cents or a dollar or something like that. And I just need uh, to be completely approved for the account. I just need three things sold and they're really not that expensive. It's just the regular, the paints, the brushes. So if you would like to help me or just check it out, just go directly to my website, lubacarlson.com. And the post, the blog post with supplies, it will just pop up and you can uh, scroll through there. Maybe there is something that you need and I very much will appreciate your purchase. Um, with that being said, I'm getting messages of people buying the mug. I am so excited to have uh, pictures of people using my mug, my design in their home, like in their studios. This is fantastic. And you can find this uh, link um, um, in the group and featured posts. It's there. Just maybe scroll through a little bit. I think it should be there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So these come in 11 ounces and 15 ounces size. This is a 15 ounce size and why I love it so much. Not only because it reminds me that this is not paint water, but because the design is on both sides. And so if you're left handed or you're right handed and it doesn't matter how you place it on your desk, you will still be able to see that this is not paint water and this is not where you rinse your brush. Yeah. So perfect gift this is a perfect gift for yourself or for an artist in your life again uh this is something that goes through um, an affiliate website so i only get like a couple of dollars or a dollar <laughs> from your purchase but it still helps it still helps it helps me keep going with my free 
uh, with free tutorials and free paintings, right? Like it costs money even to like, to me, it's something. Okay, anyway, moving on, ready to paint. So I, I showed you the paints for my paint markers. I'm just gonna show you the whole bunch. I'm using my Posca pens. Okay, if you're using a different brand, it's not no problem at all. Just make sure. So what I use, these are acrylic paints. Okay, I do not, I'm not a great fan of oil-based paint, uh, paint markers, but they also work. So you might need to adjust a little bit with that. They might not dry as fast. Kind of, you know, um, if you've never, never painted with uh, paint markers before, I suggest uh, to maybe do like a trial piece first to just kind of get a neck of it, of how things are moving and what's happening, because it's different from painting with a brush, obviously. Okay. All right. Now let's switch. Let us switch to the desk view. Let me see. This is going this way and this is going here. All right, so these are my references. So I'm going to be doing my um, acrylic painting on this huge, on this big pad. It's uh, roughly 16 by, tw uh, by 20. So this should work for those for painting. And I'll be painting with Posca pens on this. This is roughly 12 by 12. Uh, so I'll be going, you know, step by step on and off, okay? If you wanted to use the tracer, you can find tracers in the guides as per usual. Okay, let me scooch my light a little bit lower. Okay, and let's, wrong way. Just make sure that we have everything that we need for my paint mixing i'm going to be using just a regular paper plate today and i'm going to be using a small palette knife if you don't have that don't worry you can just use a brush but it's a lot easier to use a small palette knife to mix your colors so that you do not need to um so that it doesn't stick to your paintbrush and you don't make a huge mess with it, okay? Now, if you need a tracer and you have already pre-painted black or you started with a black canvas, if you need a tracer, go ahead and put your tracer on. I'm going to use my trusty chalk to, um, to freehand my flamingos. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do yeah, I'm going to put this guy on Posca pen and this guy on painting. Okay, they're pretty much the same. It's like it's just a different flower. So just pay attention to what's happening here. Change everything in anything you like. If you would like to maybe put uh, this kind of flower on this kind of on, on this painting, change anything and everything. Okay, so do your thing. And um, what else? Oh, yes. For this white outline, you can use a white gel pen, a fine tip Posca pen, or you can try and use super, super fine uh, round brush. Okay. All right. Give me a thumbs up or tell me that you're ready to paint and we will begin. So I'm going to start with the outlining my flamingo on my painting and I'm looking for my white chalk. I think I had it. I misplaced it per usual. Okay. I'll, I'll use the blue one. No big deal. Oh, I know what I did. I, I had to take it somewhere. Never mind. Okay. So this guy. <laughs> so how I do this I look at my um, um, reference, right? If you do not have a tracer, if you just want to do this freehand. And I kind of divide it into threes, uh, vertically and horizontally, this way, right? And so I see that his neck is kind of in the middle. 
right in the middle and his body is going in the back. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to grab my chalk and I normally do it. I just eyeball it. Can you see it? That's, that's the most important part. I need you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I divide it in three in, into thirds. Yeah, you should be, you should, you should see it. And over here also eyeball it. It doesn't need to be perfect. Okay. And why I like to do this with chalk is because when I'm done and my paint is dry, I can just grab a damp paper towel or a baby wipe and I just wipe off the chalk and there's no trace of it. And it's just, it's very good. Okay. So now we're going to do the big, it's kind of a question mark, but it's a lot more pronounced, right? So I'm going to draw this kind of curve, like a super curvy S even, if you will. Okay. Let me push it up a little bit so you can see the bottom. All right. And then I'm going to kind of add a little bit to it. Okay, I brought him a little bit too far. Let's fix that. Here, I'm going to go on the top instead. So that's my neck. Yep, perfect. That's his neck going all the way there. That's maybe a little bit too much. Okay, step back, check out your curve, see what what it looks like. Okay, and now for his head, let me erase the lines that I don't need so that they're not confusing for you. Okay, so his head is going right here in this area over here. So we're going to start with like a bigger oval, long oval, okay? And then his beak is extending over to here and here. And then we kind of smooth out our lines. Okay. So here we go. And his body is going to be somewhere here, rounded body. Okay. Does this make sense? If you're painting uh, freehand, I hope this makes sense. Okay, so this is for this guy, and now for this little guy over here with Posca pins, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to reverse a little bit, and he also has legs over there, so we're going to put his body right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna, going to kind of do the same thing. You start with the S shape, okay? And then I'm using this, uh, I'm using my chalk to kind of create the neck. And the neck goes all the way, like you can do this curve and it'll go all, all the way. And that's his body going up, okay? And so um, here's the neck, here's the head, yeah, here's the beak again, smooth it out, at the top, Okay, and their tails, they're kind of hanging low, so we're going to go down for the tail, like this. 
and we're going to outline, kind of help ourselves to see, maybe that's a little bit too far, not too far, but um, their wings kind of show like this. Yeah, so we're going to erase that. And then for the legs, it's quite easy, really, like you just add kind of these, they're not rectangles, but kind of these pieces here, and that's going to be legs. Okay? All right, so if you, if you need me to slow down, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate. Okay, so work on your outline. Make sure that we have the nice outline. And uh, here inside of this neck, I'm going to remove this chalk because this is where the color goes. But I have a very nice outline. That's all I need. Okay, so what I do sometimes, I just grab my hand, my dry hand, and I rub it off a little. And so the chalk stays on my hand most of it, but I still have enough for the outline so that I don't have any dust on my painting. All right? Okay. Let's get this done. Okay, so if you're using paint markers, <clears throat> grab grab your darkest pink that you have and just start filling in your um, uh, the flamingo. Okay, so what do I have here? I'm going to use this and I'm just going to do a couple of strokes so that you have an idea what we're doing so we're just using like this strokes like this but we want the whole flamingo filled in okay so start filling that in make sure to have your wing strokes going in the direction of your wing your neck strokes go in the direction of the neck and then the tummy, okay? And then moving slowly into the tail, but then make sure that your wings are going in the direction of the wing, okay? As you work with your paint markers, don't forget to shake them often, super often, like three, five strokes and you need to shake it, all right? Okay, now the people that are painting with me, we're going to make our pink. So we're going to start with some white. And I know I'm going to use more, but, you know, and we're going to add, going to put the one magenta. We're going to add colors, um, not all at the same time. Okay, that's my cadmium red. And this is where I'm going to stop for now. So I'm just going to grab some kinecrodone magenta and some of this cadmium red, and I'm going to mix it all with this white. If you do not want to mix colors, and if you have your own colors, please go ahead and use them. If you have pinks and like different pinks and different reds, and you know, if you just have things that you want to play with rather than mixing your color, obviously, of course, use what you have and what you like. I just feel like knowing how to mix colors in the long run saves you a lot of money.
because all you need to get really is uh, what do I have here? Eight. Eight colors, knowing how to mix them, eight paints, and you can paint anything, almost anything with this. Of course, you cannot mix your metallics and maybe fluorescence or neons, but most of this you should be able to do. Okay? So I'm going to use, I'm going to use my large flat. And I'm going to paint my whole bird, everything. I'm going to start with the beak. I'm going to go up. And I'm going to follow my outline. Yeah. I just dropped some paint. Here. It's a little bit hard to see for me because my light is super bright and my background is a little bit glossy because I put I put gesso on it. I'm now thinking I should have done the, the chalk based. To just make it matte it's easier to paint with the camera on and a flat background rather than a glossy background but it'll work it'll be fine once i have my outline in it's all going to be good so just follow your outlines And you want to follow your outlines in the direction the body moves. So we started with the beak. So we want to keep going in that direction. We want our strokes to move in that direction, kind of rounded, very natural way, okay? I'm going to teach you today how to create your own um, arrangement. You can put it on the flamingo, but you also can, like, I know some people really like, like to paint llamas. So you could probably paint llama head with an arrangement like that. Right? Or a panda. If you're if you're looking into painting um, gifts for Christmas, that could be something interesting to, to have done. All right, I am. I obviously did not mix enough paint, so I'm going to mix a little bit more. Okay, we used Canacridone magenta and we used cadmium red.
So we are just painting the base, the base color right now. Okay. There we go. A little bit more. I just really want to cover most of this black so that we can start painting other things, right? So that we can start working on feathers and all of that good stuff. So on the tummy over here, I'm going from the bottom up. I think that's my that's my kids' friends coming to play. So there might be some household noises, you guys. I apologize for that. I love it. I love it. Okay. So, kind of there. So yes, the point is to cover all the black and have our background done. Over here, okay, they got super excited. I'm gonna ask them to. All right, here we go, a little bit over here maybe. Okay, this does not need to be perfect, I gotta tell you right away, okay? Just put some color on it and it's good. Okay, so the um, uh, Posca markers people, <laughs> paint markers people, uh, go ahead and grab a lighter pink, maybe not exactly, like not too much lighter, but whatever you have, okay? And what you're going to do, you're going to proceed with the same technique, just adding more color, okay? Do not be afraid to add, add color to the head. Add it everywhere except for the beak. Do not over like don't put anything on the beak with the uh, with your doing paint markers. Okay. So just add just kind of outline this. Add. You're gonna add a whole lot of color. We're gonna do this again and again and again with different color. So I am just doing the. Uh, kind of showing you the technique, okay? So mine is not gonna, my, mine's gonna be far from perfect <laughs> when we're done, but I'm just showing you the technique, how you can do this with uh, paint markers, all right? Don't forget to shake them. All right, let's move back to Mr. Bird here, the acrylic one. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my paint, just a little, not too much, okay? And then I'm gonna grab whatever's left with this gynecladone, uh, no, uh, sorry, cadmium red, and just add it to whatever you have left over. So we just change the tone a little bit, okay? And we're gonna use the same flat brush, and we're gonna start we're going to leave the beak alone and we're going to start with the head and we're going to start adding just strokes. Strokes of this new shade. Okay. Going down the body, down the neck, up. So from the head up the neck, just, you know, following the same um, directions. Right, and then kind of showing that that's the wing that goes from the bottom to the top like this. Okay, can you see that? So doing, I need to move it a little bit here like this. 
I think this works, works a little bit better, right? Just from the bottom to the top, curvy motion. And just use up everything you have. Use all the paint that you have to do this. Okay? The um, uh, paint markers people grab another pink or orange-ish or red-ish or maybe slightly purple-ish color and continue filling in the bird. So what you're looking to get, you see like, I think I have seven different colors here happening. When you look close by, you will see them. Do not do any white yet, okay? No white. But use as much color as you can and do not put new color on until the old color is completely dry, okay? Just keep going. Um, uh, paint markers, people, your kind of goal is to fill in the whole body, right? Make sure that your wing stands out so you do different direction with your strokes. And yes, your, your task right now is to fill in the whole body except for the beak, okay? I hope I'm making sense. And uh, the rest of us are gonna work on creating more and more layered look with acrylics, okay? So, just a little bit water on my brush. A little bit more white. We're gonna start adding variations of color. So, I'm pretty much out of my cadmium red, so I'm gonna add some more and some more of my Kinecrodone magenta. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add my blues, which is my aquamarine. Just a tiny bit, we don't need much. Okay, a tiny touch of phthalo blue green shade. We're just gonna play with different shades, okay? Got to make sure that it's closed tight because I don't want my paints drying out. And of course, of course, lemon yellow. If you paint with me, you know I love this color. <laughs> I use it a lot. And mid yellow. Okay, I need to get the new mid yellow. Just don't forget that I need to get it. Again, reminder, if you need more supplies, if you need to buy something, it will help me a lot if you would use my affiliate link with Amazon. So if you could go to lubacarlson.com, the first blog post that pops up has most of the um, supplies that I use. And um, if you buy from there, it doesn't cost you anything if you buy from my links, but I, I get a little bit of money for that. So it always helps. Okay. I have my white, so our base was white with a little bit of Kinecrodon magenta and a little bit of cadmium red, right? So that's us here, that's where we were. And I'm going to grab a little bit of um, aquamarine just to add to this whole pile, okay? And I'm gonna grab some white, I'm gonna move this off to the side a little bit because I don't need that much. And so this is going to create a little bit of a darker, more of a purple-ish color. And that's great, because we're going to we're gonna alternate. We're going to add something dark, and then we're going to add some lighter, and then some darker. And this is how we're going to create texture. Okay. All right, so I'm using the same messy brush. I'm putting a little bit of water on it because it kind of dries out and makes life easier to have a little bit of water on it. And again, we're going to start with the head and we're going to add strokes, just messy strokes. See what I'm doing? 
just messy strokes going here and there, not covering the whole, not covering the whole painting, yeah, not covering the whole bird, just adding strokes so that we can still see the previous color going down from here because that's how the neck works. And then adding some going for the chest and the wings. So we're going to add some going this way. Okay. I'm going to grab up thing and clean my fingers. Because I somehow landed my brush into my yellow paint and now my hands are covered in yellow and sticky yellow paint. That's not not like enough. <laughs> So I'm just gonna like a quick clean up. All right. Okay, here we go. I love having baby wipes on my table. Usually they're super helpful. Okay, so I have the same messy brush. I need to keep adding variations of color, okay? I do not wanna go any more purple. So I'm not probably gonna, I am not gonna add any more blues or if I am, maybe just a tiny, tiny bit. But I would love to add a little bit of like apricot color. Yeah. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of white just directly on uh, a little bit of lemon yellow. Sorry, scratched up. Lemon yellow a little bit on my brush. With the same paint that I have here. Okay. And again, just add not too much of this because this is yellow. We do not want a lot of yellow, but it will help. It will help the rest of it stand out. See what I mean? We're creating contrast. Contrast between colors and tones and all of that just to make the flamingo really stand out. Okay. See how it now looks like there's a ton of feathers on them? And we just added just a few colors, not really that many. Okay. I'm going to rinse my brush because it's become super, it's super messy and it's dark. And I'm going to move, we're going to move into lighter colors now. Lighter colors, different shades. Okay. So we have a little bit of white here. I'm just adding cadmium red to it now. Just that. Okay. Not the mix. Just the cadmium red. Maybe a little bit more. Perfect. Wiping down my uh, my uh, palette knife. Okay. So at this point, you can continue with your large uh, with your large flat, or you can go ahead and grab a round a round a round so if you're painting a 16 by 20 i would go with the round number eight if you're painting something smaller then go with a smaller brush okay so i'm going to show you how to do this with the round brush also you can continue working with the flat if you like it but here's the round brush we just fill it in and we're going to start at the beak again, and we're going to start adding, see, kind of short 
strokes coming through with this new with this new pink that we just mixed. Just keep adding just separate strokes. They do not need you do not need to have a full flat coverage. Okay? Just keep bringing the paint one stroke at a time and keep moving down the neck close to the beak maybe even maybe even put a little bit on the beak as you go like if uh, you know getting out of the line a little bit because the beak is going to be the last thing we paint yeah and we don't really want to have this line that the feathers <laughs> stopped <laughs> they were getting like like here see we have this happening yeah they're kind of starting out of nowhere so to fix that I'm going to go from the bottom up with the curved motions and I will put the, some of this paint will get on the beak and that's not a big deal it's okay because the beak we're going to paint later it'll be fine okay see There we go. And then add a little bit of water to your brush if your brush is not moving freely. And my um, paint marker people, you just need to keep going with more and more color. Okay? If you're doing, if you're working with paint markers, let me know in the comments so that I know and let me know your progress. Because if you're ready for your next step and I'm stalling, thinking that there is much more to do. Yeah? No, I'm not stalling, but you know what I mean. I'm giving you enough time to, to work through this. Okay. So we have this pink. Let's add, let's grab a decent amount of this uh, kinecodone magenta. Mix it in. Okay. And the same thing off the beak into the head. See, I am over here like there's a messy line over here don't worry about it if you get out of your outline a little bit because you can cover this up it will so for once you can cover this up with black outline later right or uh we we, we might cover it up with flowers even so do not worry about making it perfect we're just laying down color all right. I landed in yellow again. Why do I do this? <laughs> All right. Okay. I don't see any comments from people painting with markers. So I'm just going to keep going. And once I'm ready, I will tell you your next step. So I just trust you that you keep filling it in. Okay, white, mixing a little bit more of different tone, um, a little bit of warm yellow, not too much, just a little bit. And obviously I want to do this with my palette knife, not the brush. And a little bit of Kinecudone Magenta. I am looking for a creamy, nice creamy light color and I am even picking up some of the colors that are left over from the previous mixings which is perfectly fine okay I'm gonna add a little bit more of this deep yellow yes okay here we go I don't want orange I just want a nice creamy peachy no more like an apricot not a peach color 
more africa side way okay all right a little bit of water on your paintbrush using the same messy paintbrush it's all good it's all same colors adding more to the flamingo now this is light see it's light it shows a lot so um use this color sparingly okay don't put a lot of it we just kind of adding This is going to be our background to add more pink on top of it so that the pinks are not all kind of um, blending together, right? So that they have something to stand out against. So that there is some. So, yeah, so lots of spots here, okay? Not just like, just kind of like that. So I'm washing out my brush. I am moving to a clean side of my paper plate in this case, palette. I'm adding some clean white on there. <coughs> Excuse me. And can I put on magenta? And that's it. Mix together. Oh, I love this color. Pretty, so pretty. Okay. All right. Put my hands in the yellow again. What is it with me today? It's probably because it's like a double double project, probably a little bit here and there. <laughs> okay. All right, so this yummy pink. I need to stop doing that, y'all. All right. Yummy pink, bubblegum pink, pretty much. Okay. Again, starting from the head. And using that apricot that we just painted, kind of paint, not maybe directly on top of it, but super close to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. See where we're going? Whoop. Just add more pink. Just for everything. Here goes our wings. So yeah, with painting like flamingos, you want to add a lot of layers and a lot of colors. And this will help you make this uh, 3D impression. Okay. All right, let's rinse the brushes. And I'm going to talk a little bit about for people who are painting with markers, just going to rinse my brush completely so it doesn't so it doesn't get stuck like that forever. And I'm also going to clean up my painting a little bit because I've dropped a couple of dropped a couple of things here and there. Okay.
Okay, paint markers, people, you are going, if you have filled all of this up, okay, we're going to start with your flower, with your biggest flower, okay, so um, uh, you can put it here, you can put it down here, wherever you want, but your biggest flower is going to be your center of, the center of your composition, so the way I like to do this is I like to plan it. So I like to maybe make a circle for the flower that's the biggest one. And actually, this is the composition thing that I'm going to do the same with the acrylic painting. So um, it would make sense to listen also if you're listening to this. Okay. And then what you can do, you can add smaller it could be smaller flowers or it could be smaller um, um like clusters of flowers that go in the same okay and maybe one here okay and then maybe another here let's do it here okay and then you're going to want to add the foliage, probably something going this way, and then something going this way, um, add something going this way, okay? Now, you want to keep the head so that we can still see it, right? So maybe we could add something coming this way over here. Okay? Or you can just print out the, the tracer and, you know, uh, put it on here and trace it on top of your flamingo and then use your colors, okay? So how this is different from what we're doing here. With the acrylic paints, we will need to block the colors and we need we will need to block the um the flowers and for multi-level flowers like the ones that have petals on top of other petals like here um the order of operations is different okay so what you're gonna do here for your uh paint markers you're going to start with your circle with your center. So we're gonna grab, what was it, like light brown or just brown. Don't forget to shake it. Guys, the people that are painting a flamingo with acrylics, let me know how you're doing so that I know we can move on. It's kind of giving you time to catch up, okay? So uh, we're going to do like a center here and you're gonna, gonna paint it all. And then you're gonna get a lighter, lighter um, apricot color. If you're doing the color to color or you can use other colors, you can use other colors, okay? And then I kind of like to mark my inner circle of petals like this. And then I paint my petals in. And you might need to go back and uh, add another coat. Yeah. But so with, um, with these Mosca paints, just take your time, go one coat, and then move on to the next petal. And then... Uh, when it's dry, you can come back and you can finish your coat, okay? And so then when you have your first layer of flowers, then uh, petals, then you can grab your next color. And uh, you can paint the next um, uh, layer of petals in between. This is not the way we're going to do this with our acrylics. Okay, I have a thumbs up. <laughs> I have one. <laughs> so, so this is how you start 
with this flower. And then with Posca pans, you can simply layer. So then after this flower, I would do the foliage, all the leaves, okay? Let them dry. And then you can add your other flowers on top. So with Posca pans, there's layering. You can layer a lot of things here, okay? With acrylic paints, you kind of have to plan ahead and um, it's kind of hard to do it that way, all right? So let's move back to, you know what? I'm gonna move because Posca people uh, or paint markers people, you know what you're doing, right? So I'm gonna take this off my desk for now because you guys know what's happening. So you can just keep going. <clears throat> okay, so acrylic painters, we are ready to get to, to the crown. Let's start working on that crown. So before I do that, I want to make sure that all of this is dry and it is not. So I'm going to grab my heat gun. Uh, you can use a hair dryer, you know, whatever, whatever works, whatever you have. Hold on, I have a, I have a thing wrapped up. Lots of cords here on my desk. Okay, just dry it. I need to dry it from the beak up. So the this part down here really doesn't matter right now. It can dry naturally. Okay, I am trying to dry it thoroughly because there is a whole lot of paint here, right? We put, what, seven different coats with different colors. So it will take a while to dry, right? But we need it, if not completely dry, then almost dry because we do not want to pull paint, okay? <clears throat> so let's work on, on this baby here. You can use the um, um, reference from before. You can use the, what's the, the thing, what I'm telling? <laughs> the uh, printout, the tracer, if you need to like to see where, what goes where, okay? I'm going to freehand it, all right? Now, before we freehand it, I'm gonna show you a couple of strokes that I think will be useful, all right? So um, 
one of my favorite things so you can use for this all of this you can use a medium size flat a medium size angular brush I'm trying to see if yeah so I would just go with that you can always play with round brush and everything like that so let me show you real quick what you can do with different brushes as for petals and flowers um, let me grab another piece of paper. Hold on. And I'll grab something black. Since we're painting on black. Here, I have this. This will work. This will work for us just fine. And um, I'm not mixing colors for this just yet. I'm going to use whatever I have here on my palette to just kind of show you the shaping of flowers. Okay? So let's... Um, Let's grab a medium size flat, make it damp, load it and paint, just grab some color, okay, chisel tip, now I want my color, I mean I, I want my flower to fit into this circle. You can see that. Can you see a circle? Here, there is a circle, so you can see it. <laughs> okay, so here's my middle, right here in the center. So I'm just going to put that flat down like this. See, you go one parenthesis, two parenthesis. So I'm pretty much pushing on the corner of the brush. And then I think of a star shape as I'm doing this. Oh. And another. Yeah. Depending on how hard you push on the brush and also how big your brush is, you can get different sizes. Okay? So um, if you put two colors on the same brush, you can get a color variation. Something that might look interesting so that's one way the um, so that's that for for these guys over here probably a smaller brush would be better but I'm just gonna do this anyway so you kind of press it one and then you press it another time next to it I'm doing it with the big brush so that you can see. So now you have like two of these petals, right? And then we use a smaller brush and we kind of, you can connect them like this. Look, and you already have a super cute floral addition <laughs> to your painting. Okay. For this leaf over here, using the same flat brush, just fill it up. What I like to do is I like to add my center so that I know where I'm going from. And then I start from the top and I go down and then I start adding like this. See, see what happened? And then you have this interesting leaf over here. Obviously, we're going to use different color for it, but here we go. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with, with a round brush. Okay, so I'm going to rinse this out, and I'm going to grab the round brush, the same that I've been using. Just fill it in with my paint, fill it up, and... Uh, same five point, yeah, round brush gives you a little bit more control if you want to make like more rounded petals. So there we go, that's your rounded petals. For this um, uh, floral also, you can just go one, two, yeah, smaller brush. 
change the size of your brush so that you can do these things. Okay. Um, the round brush also will make this this a kind of leaf look a little bit different because it's like a different. See, it gives you different um, lines. So maybe if you can grab a different piece of paper and play with your brush and your strokes and see what you're going to do. Like that. OK. Deb says, I really have to practice to get my flower petals to look nearly as good as your examples. Well, yeah, it really does come with practice, okay? And please notice that, like, look, they're not the same at all. Yeah? But it is. it does matter to practice with your brush and um, to know how much pressure to apply. Practice really does make progress. So the more you do it, you know, the easier it gets. So what <laughs> I used to, I used to just fill up pages after pages, like with flowers, just grabbing paint and sitting here and just doing flowers, page after page after page. And so, yeah, it gets easier. Okay. Um, one last thing I wanted to show you. And I'm out of room with this one. So I guess I'm going to grab yet another one. I'm going to show you a messy rose because everybody likes them. Well, I mean, so far people really like them. And for the messy rose, you would need a large, like super big round brush. That's what I like to use for bigger sizes. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how I do this. You can do this with a smaller brush too. This is a round number 10, but <laughs> compared to this round number eight, see, it looks more like round number 20. So, I mean, it depends on the brand. Okay, so I'm going to fill this, make it wet. I'm going to grab some paint on it. And I'm going to show you the huge one and you can adapt as you need to. So pretty much what you're doing is painting rounded strokes. And the goal is to bring it to the shape that you want. So I want a round rose top view. Okay. So I'm kind of kind of liking this. So that's one co first coat. And then I would use the Conicridone Magenta and Cadmium Hue, uh, Cadmium Red, sorry, with the same messy brush. Same messy brush, okay? I'm going to grab some of this magenta directly on the brush. Yeah, and, and then I'm just going to repeat and maybe get into the spots where I don't have anything just yet. Just moving pretty fast around my rose, or the flower. The goal is to cover the black. Okay. Wipe it off on a paper towel, grab a little bit of water, and I'll grab some red. And just add some red. You have got to play with this stuff, y'all. It's not going to just happen, okay? I know you don't want me to. You, you probably don't want to hear that. <laughs> but I am honest with you, y'all. That's is not just going to happen. Okay. So now I'm rinsing my brush. Rinse, rinse, rinse. And now I'm going to grab a little bit of white. 
I'm showing this to you because I want you to be able to create your own flower arrangements for your paintings. Um, put some white on your brush, and but now you're just gonna use the same, the same, the same round brush, but you're gonna just use the tip of it, just the tip, so you're not gonna push it down so hard and just super lightly add a couple, a few, a couple, a few of light highlight, of white highlights. Ta-da, you have a rose. Okay. Let me know if this makes sense. And we're gonna move on. Let's paint some flowers on our, let's add some flowers to our flamingo. Okay. So, so this one is a five. Oh, sorry. This one is a five petal, just that I just showed you. This one is done with the same technique as a rose, except for that it's much smaller. Okay. These little guys are really just circles painted and then added white gel pen, pen on it. I'll show you how. All right. So there's really nothing complicated. It looks like it's super complicated, but it really is not. Okay, let me put this rose away. And I'm going to sit down. <laughs> I've been hopping up and down. All right. So we have a whole lot to do here, right? Okay, so let's see. We have two ideas here, right? You can put a one large flower or you can put a bunch of flowers of the same color together. I like to put them close to the head and then kind of spread out. Um, I know that there, there are people who really like to put this bunch over here where the, the the neck bends like some people like like those flowers right here and then spread out so do what you like i'm gonna put my flowers right here above above her head his head and uh yeah and we're gonna move on okay you ready <laughs> who's ready to paint some flowers let's make this happen free hand or, as I said, trace and just use the tracer for that. Nothing wrong with that, okay? So let's make some orange. Let's make some orange. Don't need much, so I'm just going to use my medium, medium size, flat, um, some of this cadmium red. And I'm going to spray, if I find my spray, oh, okay, hold on. My little spray, not alcohol, water here. Um, little spray bottle. I just like to spray my palette a little bit because I have a ceiling fan going and it dries out my palette too fast. It doesn't dry out my paint, my painting fast enough, right? But it dries out my palette. <laughs> okay, let's grab a little bit of lemon yellow, a little bit of this um, cadmium or red. Let's mix it together see what color we get do we like it do we not like it maybe add more yellow to this so we're just going to start mixing colors for our flowers if oh yes here's another thing so if you wanted to paint if you want to paint this sunflower over here you need to start with the outer petals Okay, start with the outer petals, let them dry completely, then add the inner petals, let them dry completely, then add the, um, uh, the center, all right? So let's, let's see where it takes us. Okay, I am thinking I'm gonna do a nice cluster right here in the middle. So you... Let's, so here's what's happening. Do we see this? Do we see that the black shows through? If black shows through a lot, it means that my paint is not, um, is transparent. It's not opaque. 
So to find that, I'm just adding white to it and I will have to do another coat. So there is one petal, two petal, three petal, four petal, five. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of magenta to this color that I'm painting with. Just get a little bit of a different tone for my next flower. Which is going to go on top of this flower. So a little bit of white also will help. Um, let's put it right here for the middle. See where I put the X? That's going to be the middle. And so I'm just going to add more. Super messy right now, do you see? It's all a mess. It doesn't matter right now. We're just adding spots for our flowers. So there's two flowers. Adding a little bit more color. And maybe right here is going to be my third flower. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. There. We are just saving space for it. If you're using the tracer and you have pre-trace design, simply fill in your flowers with the colors you like. And be prepared to add more layers, you know, to, to work with the black. Okay. So add a little bit more white to your paint. Because if you have this issue that I am having here. To just kind of help help the flower stand out and help it work. So I'm just adding more layers with added a little bit of more white so that I can see my flowers. So that I can see all my petals and they're not so transparent that I can't say where is my flower, where my flower is and where my flamingo is. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm pretty much blocking the black here. I'm gonna let them dry. Just let them sit and dry. And while, while they're drying, we're going to work on all the additions, all the fun stuff. Okay. So we're going to clean out this brush and we're going to need a clean palette. Well, I am going to need a clean palette. Probably if you're doing, if you still have plenty of room on yours, keep using it. Okay, just cleaning my brush. Okay, we're going to go in and create this kind of cute lavender color. I'm going to grab some of this white, some of this magenta, not too much, some of the um, phthalo blue green shade. Dry now, but we just wouldn't need much. Okay, and we're gonna mix it. That's too blue. Let's grab a little bit of cadmium red. Let's see. Yep, we're getting there. Yeah, I like this color. 
I don't need a lot of it, so this will work. What I have here will work just fine. Okay, so I'm going to have a sprig of these purple things going up this way. So I'm just going to start adding. See, just like that. One, two, touch with the corner of your brush. I'm, on, I'm, I'm using the flat brush. One, two, one, two, one, two. That's it. Stop. Okay, now we can add them going the other direction, going here. Same things. Maybe a little bit lower. Uh, we can have them go up here. Okay. And I'm just going to stop with this color for now. I have already three of them, so we're going to stop. And now let's mix a little bit of green. We're going to start mixing different different shades of green also again if you prefer to use if you have greens and you know all of these colors available and you are not interested in mixing then don't don't mix you know just use what you have use what you have and what you love what you enjoy okay so again we're going to start with some white Gonna grab some of this um, aquamarine and some of this warm yellow, uh, mid yellow. It's kind of dried up, but I think what, for my for what we need, it will work. Create some green. Not enough green. More yellow. This is a lot of yellow here, right? But it's a cute color. I like it. You still can use it. Okay, I'm going to grab a small flat for this because I cannot paint tiny circles with a medium size. I just can't for the life of me. Okay, and so I'm just going to go and find it like somewhere spots like where's where's the empty spot like here so i'm just gonna go ahead and paint they can be different sizes they do not need to be all the same size just a cluster maybe some here they do not need to be perfect circles also just here i'm gonna have them you know like cluster down a little bit like that maybe i'm gonna add a few here so i kind of like the rule of three here for myself that i follow you can see that i do like three flowers, three purple sprigs, three sets of um, circles, right? It just kind of helps with the composition. Okay. Let's add some bigger leaves. And for that, we're going to need more colors. So let's grab some of this um, phthalo blue and just adding it directly into where I was. Okay, that's an interesting color. I'm going to add some lemon yellow to it. I want you to play with your paint and your colors. So that's why. I really like this color. It's kind of teal. Whatever happened here, I like it. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a huge leaf over here, just like I showed you by adding, see, just like that. Just add your strokes, and now you have a shape, and so then you can go back and kind of, if you want to round it up, you can 
you can round it them you can round them up or you can add a little bit more or something to them but that's your leaf and I froze up Deb says it, she enjoys the color mixing. Okay, very cool. I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoy it. I enjoy it very much. Okay, so there's one leaf. Let's put, I think we need one, something up here. So, it also does matter, like, see, I grabbed a small brush and it's really not working. So I'm just going to go back to my medium size flat and save this leaf and make it larger because I want a larger like greenery. And as you see, I am not add like I'm not connecting anything. I have no stems. The stems will come later. <laughs> okay. So um, keep playing with your greens. I'm gonna put a little bit of aquamarine on my plate and more of the halo blue green shade so that I can just mix a little bit more interesting colors. Sometimes these are such a pain to close. Okay. So lots of yellows, lots of like warm yellow, cool yellow, warm uh, blue and cool blue. And that's all you need for all your greens. A few months ago, I shared that when I just started painting, I, I would paint anything and everything that did not have green in it. I could not deal with that. It was just, you know, too much for me to... It was a huge learning curve for me to learn the greens because there's so many shades and so many ways and all of that. So here I have a phthalo blue green shade with... Um, What's it called? Mid yellow with the mid yellow mixed. And I'm just going to go back to my leaves that I just painted and I'm going to add this on top of it because, yeah, this is like a little bit more of the natural. It's a little bit more natural color, something that I like more. But yes, I encourage you to, to try and Find your own color combinations. Play with it, see what you like. Just, yeah. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> My rule of three prevails, right? We still have to go with the rule of three for me. So I'm going to add another leaf over here. And I'm not going to worry that I've covered a little bit of those purple leaves because they're still sticking out. It's layering. See, you can still see them. They're still there, but it's added layering. Okay. Let's see. I like this. Okay. So I'm going to grab with the same messy brush. You know what? I'm going to wipe it on the paper towel because my brush is super messy. And I'm going to grab some of this um, lemon yellow directly on this messy brush. And I'm going to just add a little bit of this color on the inside of these leaves that we just painted just to give them a little bit more color so that they're not super flat. Oh, super cute. I like that. Super bright. Right? And see what happened, like going into warm and cold colors. So we used warmer tones to mix the green. And then I put a cold, cooler tone yellow on it. And look, it pops so bright. Okay. All right. 
Rinse the, rinse the brush. Rinse the brush. Our flowers should be dry enough for us to add details to them. So decide what colors you want for your flowers. I think I'm going to go more with, uh, I think I'm going to go with like more like of a cadmium red and a little bit of white on mine here. So I'm just going to start with the flower that I painted first, but I'm not going to put it, I'm not going to put this color on. Okay, that's not bright enough. More, more red. I want more red. Let's try again. There we go. Okay, but I'm not, I'm going to try and not put it on the overlapping petals. Does it make sense? Then I'm getting a little bit of Jump on the same brush and just, just making it brighter, maybe a little bit less pastel looking. Okay, I'm gonna need more red for this. Same messy brush. I'm using more red on this flower over here, the top one, the biggest flower. So just I'm just doing outline with the red. And then go back and fill in the petals a little. Grab a little bit of white on the same messy brush. Add a little bit of white. It's like a highlight or a petals that look different. Lots of things you can do with this. Going back to this other flower. Maybe grabbing another color. Don't be afraid to play with this. Flowers are very forgiving. Also acrylics is very forgiving. You can always go back and do what you want, <laughs> right? Paint it over. If you don't like what you're seeing, paint it over. Okay, we're going to allow the flowers and the leaves and all of that, they're all going to need to dry now. So we're going to leave them be. Uh, we're going to go back. If you have any brushes in your water, please rinse them and take them out of your water. This is what I'm doing. You know, if you paint with me, you know, I'm pretty, yeah, I like my my brushes out of the water. I do not like them sitting there. So let's take care of that. And we're going to paint the flamingo's head. We're going to finish. We're going to put all the touches, everything that needs to be added to the flamingo's head. So we're going to need a lot of white for this. Well, not a lot, but quite a bit of what. Actually, yeah, a lot. Sorry. A lot. <laughs> All right. Grab your flat brush and paint. Let's start with the beak. Paint the whole beak white. Just the beak. Okay. And it goes kind of like this. And then it connects to the beak like that. So like a misshape and heart shape a little bit. At the spot where the beak connects to the head. This is where it helps that we had strokes done in this direction because you can still see this, right? You should be able to. Anyway.
Okay. All right. Now, um, I want you to look closely. This is important, okay? So you see how this kind of misshapen uh, heart over here, right? So if you draw a line, a curvy line, from the tip of the beak through where this connects, the, the two curves connect, if you do this line and keep going up, it will show you where your eye should be. All right? I'm going to do this with uh, my brush to show you, and then I'll erase the white line. So do not, do not paint this. All right? I'm just showing you where it will be. So I start at the tip over here, and I start the curve going through this where the lines meet, okay? And then this is where my eye will be, okay? So, and I'm going to move it up a little bit. And so I'm just going to paint this. Flamingos have this white kind of outline around their eye. I think that's partially why so many people like them, because they have this kind of human-shaped eye in a way. Okay. And so here, like that, and then what they have, it's like an eyeliner. So you just follow the eye and it goes down there a little bit. So you can kind of, um, you know, stretch it, so to speak. Stretch it into there, okay? If you don't like, like if your line is not clean enough, you can always grab a paper towel or baby wipe and just like you would, just like you would fix your makeup. Yeah, like slightly light motions and just fix it and bring it to where you, bring it to the point where you like it. Sometimes I like it to be pointing a little bit upward, sometimes that way. I mean, it all, it all is the same. Okay, got it? I have some white on my brush. And I'm going to use this white. I'm going to mark centers for my flowers, okay? So I'm just going to put it up here like this and twirl it around itself. Doesn't need to be perfect. But it will make it easier to put my, to put yellow inside for my flowers okay now while this white is drying we're gonna grab the round brush smaller round brush if you have a small round brush it would be the best or you can use the same round brush that you've been using but uh so we have been pushing it real hard right to, to put this, but like now we're gonna add white highlights and so we're just gonna use the tip. So again, if you have a smaller round brush, use it. I'm using what I have here, uh, the middle size, medium size. Um, I do have a smaller round brush, but I wanna show you how to do it with what we've already been using. So fill it up and you're just gonna use the tip of the brush, okay? And we're going to add tiny, tiny strokes of white to the head. Tiny, tiny. Okay. And then a little bit heavier strokes to the neck. Just a little bit heavier, not too much. And then again, heavier, thicker lines to the chest. Okay, and then the heaviest are going into, into the wing. Got it? Now, if you do this and you look back and you're like, oh, I've overdone white. 
what am I going to do? This, this is too much. It's really easy. You let it dry, and then you go back to your pinks, and you just add a little bit of pinks on top of this white, okay? So when you step back and you look at it, if you think that, oh, that's a little bit off, I want more pink, this is what you would do. Okay, I think I added a little bit too much white here, so I might, I might go back and fix it, but I want this white dry before I do that. So the white is drying, let's keep working on the beak. The beak, the top of the beak, so right here, so you will start at the very tip. You know what, let's get some black on the brush so that I can show you right away. Open. <laughs> open black and I probably would do this with a smaller smaller flat so that I can just have better control over this fill it up chisel tip okay we're gonna start at the tip and we're just gonna do a straight line through here like this it doesn't go all the way to the head. It stops kind of, um, I want to say, three quarters of the way. Okay. So three quarters of the way. A line that goes to the tip of the beak right here. Okay. And so then. I'm just checking if my, make sure your paint is, you're not putting your hand on your paint, okay? Because we did the white highlights. So make sure that if you're resting your hand on your canvas, it's dry. Okay, so fill this in. It's coming together, isn't it? Okay, if you're like me <laughs> and you need this line to be super nice and, uh, you know, uh, you can use painter's tape, you can use washi tape. Just make sure that background is dry. Yep, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to show you how I do that when I do not want to, when I don't feel like dealing with certain things. This will work. Just, you know, make it simple. It's not a big deal. It's not cheating, I promise. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't need to be super straight. It's just my OCD yelling at me. Mm, there, much better. I like that. Okay. And then we kind of have this upside down smile coming from the same spot. So coming from here, we're going to add the smile kind of ish, right? Right here. Okay. And then there is this nostril kind of happening. So it's like that. It's like a teardrop shape. Okay. And now it's not cheating, it's genius. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll take that. Okay, now we're going to paint the eye, black paint in here. So sometimes I make it almond shape and sometimes I make it round. It really doesn't matter. It's a very artistic representation, right, of your of, of the flamingo. So do, do what you like. If you're not comfortable freehand in a circle, use the tools that you have around you. I'm pretty sure you will find something that will match 
the size that will let you do the let you do a decent kind of circle. Just go slow and yeah, just allow yourself room, allow room for mistakes and know that you can always fix that. Okay. All right, so we're gonna let this dry. This needs to dry. Rinse in my brush. Rinse your brush. <laughs> Don't forget to rinse your brush. All right. Got it? Okay. What am I looking at? I'm looking at the mid center of the flowers. So let's use that smaller flat or use whatever you like again don't be concerned about you know that doesn't matter really if it does the job it's good enough i'm just going to grab plain old mid yellow and i'm going to paint the centers of the flowers that we have already blocked with white okay and this allows the yellow to stand out very well and it's not turning our yellow into orange. So this is good. All right. All right. Okay, so next step, I'm going to use, I'm going to be using my uh, Posca pen, my fine tip white Posca pen. You can use also, you can use your gel pen, white gel pen, okay? Or you can use a super, super fine tip uh, round brush for this, but then uh, it's like, it's like this. It's like 10 zero, I think it said. Can you even see it? How, how tiny this is, yeah? Super, super tiny. Okay, if you're going to do that, you can use that. Just be very careful as you're doing that. Okay, I kind of messed up this brush, so I'm going to open and grab a new one. Uh, Cheryl, uh, if Cheryl's here, she knows, but uh, Cheryl suggested that I add Posca pants to my, but to the blog post that uh, I'm trying to get affiliate with Amazon so that maybe I can make a little bit of money to keep going with free offerings uh, with all the free paintings that I offer you guys. And so I made this list of supplies that you can get and it's nothing like you're not, it's no cost to you. It's the same cost in Amazon, whatever but they would pay me a little bit for the, for, for the referral, right? And so, yeah, she, she said, hey, you need to add Posca pans and gel pans to that list. And I totally, I will, but I haven't done that yet. But if you would like to check out my list, it's, um, you can just go to the bookarlson.com and I think the first page that opens will be that blog post, so. At yobacarlson.com. Yes, I am promoting that a lot because uh, to get approval to um, to be an affiliate with Amazon, I have to sell, like, uh, they want me to sell three items. I only need to sell three items, y'all. So if you need anything, there's paints and mixed media pads and brushes. Okay, so what you need to do with Posca pans, you kind of shake them a lot when they're new. <laughs> and then you need to push it so that the paint will come through. Usually takes a little while. But it'll come, I think. If it doesn't, then I'll just use the old one. It's just that I, ah, oh, here we are. Okay, perfect. So, white outline. So, I'm adding this to pretty much everything here, okay? 
this is what makes this is what makes it look so whimsical. It's all these white things over here, okay? And the white outline for the flamingo and everything. So let's let's start on that. Um, I'm done with painting, so I'm just gonna put this away because I tend to get my hands and touch things that are wet. Oh, we still do need white for the eye when it's dry, but I'll get it. Okay, so here we go. So I'm just going back to the purple flowers over here. Yeah, I walked around and I'm going to outline. And you want to be out of the lines, okay? You do not want to completely match exactly where your paint is. So it's going to look like things are being messy and you want to use light kind of sketchy motions okay so you do not want to have like a straight up outline yeah just like that if you can add the inside kind of things all right and so now we can add a the the stock like they can all get attached see i need to go back to make sure that you can see it yes you should see you should be able to see this okay and so next i'm going to do the next purple one again super light strokes in the middle in the middle moving fast because if you start moving slow you kind of start creating strokes that are not so messy and then it's not looking like it's not the same look then you want to be like shaky hand <laughs> pretty much okay let's see let's go ahead and do these um, I'm just, I just do a spiral in them, like a cinnamon roll spiral. Yeah, again, just add lines if you want them to connect. It makes sense for them to connect. Okay, now this one here. Just a spiral, messy, however you want to do it. Connect. Maybe this is coming from here. Doesn't really matter. Okay, more of these. Fine tip Fosca pen. This is what I'm using. Okay, there's another purple ones that I am not ignoring them, but they're kind of sticking out a little bit. Here we are. Yeah, add. Okay, oh, I landed on my eye. Oh. Okay, let's save that. I wasn't super careful, I should be more careful. It's a good thing you can just wipe things off with acrylics when something like this happens. Okay, clean my hand so I don't create any more <laughs> messy things. Okay, we're getting we're getting to the end of it. We're almost done. You know, it took a little bit. It's gonna take a little bit longer than two hours, but we're getting there. Okay, so the leaf. I'm going to do the middle first, yeah? And then I'm going to create my leaf. Okay. 
So see how these white lines they extend they extend your your designs, your little like doodling designs, right? They get they look a lot fancier with this with the whites. I think it's called white doodling, but <laughs> lots of people call them doodles, right? Okay, going into the big flowers now. So with the big flowers, look, you start, you start on the petal and you go all the way to the top and then go back, but you stop where the next petal starts, okay? Like here, it goes all the way to the top and then down, and I'm gonna stop over here where we meet the next petal, see? So it makes it look like my petals are overlapping. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna do it with this other flower. And I am definitely going to go on the black and use messy lines. See what I'm doing? I'm making a mess. But this is what makes this this piece so cute. The messy lines that are out of everything. Okay. Hope this makes sense. Deb says so pretty already. Yeah, thank you. Right? Okay. Now we're going to add these guys wherever we want. Okay. So I'm going to look and see where do I have room? I have room over here. So I'm just going to create a line and some like random uh, parts here and there. Okay like hairlines. They're like hairlines and they're super random. I'm going to bring this up higher so you can see there. See? Like a tree. Super random. And then you can add, those are like, I like them because the teardrop shape, I don't know why I like them. I think they're cute. But also messy. Messy, more than one line, just go over it a few times. Don't try to match the line, just be messy. Yeah, go back maybe if you need to, and then go back and add the inside. Again, super messy. Okay, so that's a big one. Maybe from here, we'll add a couple of small ones. There are the fillers, right? They're going to just fill in the composition. Here we go. Maybe, maybe just one here, just one, just shows up. Okay. Okay, um, I did put my paints away a little bit too soon. <laughs> Just a little bit too soon. So I'm going to need lemon yellow and I'm going to need white. And I'm going to use, you can use the wrong side of your brush for this. Or you can use your uh, pencil, like the wrong side of your, the rubber side of the pencil. Um, um, here's what I like. I'm going to show you real quick if I can find it here. So I have pencils like this and they make circles. So we're going to do dots. You can have, you probably might have, you might have a dotting tool or the wrong side of your brush will work. Anything. Okay. So we want, I want to make small, small-ish dots, not big. 
So I'm just going to use the wrong side of the brush for this. Mm, not this one, and not this one, sorry. Lost the brush that I like to use for this. Ah, uh, here is. See, it has like a flat side. This will work. So I'm going to mix first. I'm going to grab some white, okay, and I'm going to add some yellow, lemon yellow to it because I want it to show. Okay, good enough. Okay, and so I'm going to look for bare spots. Where do I have bare spots that need need a filler? Like right here, we need a filler. So I'm just going to add lightly. Like light touches. Okay, here, bare spot. Okay, maybe overlap it. Take it to another level and overlap things a little bit. Here. I want to add some here to just kind of bring this all together, okay? And these dots, you can just leave them as dots. They don't need to be connected to anything. They're just there. Yeah. Okay. Grab your small round brush. Sorry, right, not yellow. Whoopsie. Sorry, sorry. Scratch that. Not yellow. White. White. All round brush. White. Or this is where they come in useful. You can grab, you know, things like this, like a bigger dot. Fill it in, and either paint a circle, or just use your dot making tool and make a circle for your eye highlight. So there's, I like to put one bigger one on the top corner, like on the diagonal a little bit, and then I like to grab a smaller one and add a smaller one on the bottom like that. Okay. Rinsing my brush and back to my outlining tool, whatever it is that you're using. Okay, rough lines around the eye, not getting into wet paint. Okay. And then we're going to go and add some rough lines around the body, the whole body. So we're adding white around the beak. I need to doesn't. Okay, hold on. Need to shake it more. All right, so again, around the beak, like all this way down here a little bit so that it all can be seen. Around the neck, broken lines, broken, okay? And then here, and then the neck goes down, so we need to put it here and here. I got a little bit carried away. <laughs> Put some on the beak. There.
All right. I think... I think this looks good. So let me see if I can take the tape off without running the heat gun. Because I just like to, to see the finished painting with nice crisp lines. It is just It is just the thing. So if you guys did the um, Posca pants or paint pants, I would love to see what happened. <laughs> okay, pulled a little bit of paper, but that's okay. Okay, so next one, we're painting the gnome. It's going to be a Christmas gnome in a knitted hat with a, it's the guy that's holding an ornament. So, and that one is not on a regular schedule. It's on Friday because it's Black Friday. And I think the best thing we can, I can do with my time is to be creative on the Black Friday. So, Ta-da! Here we go. More flamingos for those who need more flamingos. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, did we paint the legs? So this this guy over here, we do not paint the legs on him because it's a whole different. Like it's more close by. You can't see the legs. With this guy over here. It's a different story, right? This guy was much smaller, so we had room for the legs. So nope, no legs, no legs here. For this one to add, add, to add legs to him on scale, like you would need to add another 16 by 20 down there. Okay? I hope this makes sense. <laughs> All right, Let, let's see. So yes, we are painting. Um, hey, so we're painting the gnome. I even have it somewhere. The gnome. Where is he? Nope. Um, ah, here, here. The gnome. This guy. So this super happy dude is going to happen on Friday, Black Friday. Um, as usual, all the replays will be available, and this replay will be available to you later. As soon as I get it all downloaded and posted and all of that, I hope you enjoy your weekend. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope you had fun. Make sure to add your paintings um, in the group, show in the group. I love to see them. And uh, there, much better, right? <laughs> now, now she does it. I'll see you later, guys. Okay, bye.